Welcome to the Damn Good Marketing Podcast Season 3. We're asking the big questions this time around. Join us and find out what we're talking about. As though marketing as a business owner wasn't frustrating enough, a bunch of tweets was a thread. But now a thread is like one tweet, isn't it? I liked what someone said that Instagram, we were seeing the photo and then reading the caption. So now we read the caption and then we see the photo. What's changed? Nothing. Is that the right answer? (laughs) But everything, if you're a business owner, because you just don't know what to do and what not to do, Asita. There's like that content animal is huge. And frankly, I think even marketing teams are tired. Right. This time we are simply not jumping at new things with the kind of enthusiasm that typically characterizes the marketing function. Because you don't know, is it going to help? And genuinely, why start one more thing? Because content production, God knows, is not an easy enough thing to do in normal circumstances. In fact, I was going to write an article on Substack, which is my new shiny toy. That article was going to be called Losing My Thread of Thought. And then I lost my thread of thought. (laughs) So it's really difficult, right? It's not something that you can just constantly keep churning while also somehow keeping a day job. I think that's a unicorn dream and we're all realizing that. So what will threads do to us? There is that fear. What if my competitor is there and they are suddenly building a following, then what happens to me? Yeah, It is daunting because like you said, my thoughts used to be on Medium, then maybe they were on a blog and now they're on Substack. And it feels like there are so many places to say things and I don't have anything to say. So welcome to the Damn Good Marketing Podcast. Let's talk about content creation. What do we expect and what's reality? Do you sometimes also feel like you're thinking a thought based on what medium you will eventually put it out on? Oh, so true. That's what I said. I feel like I should be better at threading geeks (laughs) because the words come to me first Mm -hmm. and then I could think about, okay, is there an image that goes with it? But for the professional side, I struggle with Instagram because the image has to come first. And in saying all of that, we've already contextualized the thought to the medium onto which It would go out, which is probably taking something away from it in and of itself. Yeah. And so we need a way to think about simplifying content Mm. where the thoughts come first and you think about what is it? Why do you want to say anything at all? Like maybe if you're running a really good business and you have customers, then maybe just keep your mouth shut and (laughs) run the business. Okay. To some extent. Absolutely. I think, but. We are all in a hurry to grow and we do see content as a cheaper alternative to gain traction, I think. Mm. Uh, Something about it, because it's not quantifiable in money, I guess, because Mm. it's more of a time thing. So we see it as an easy channel for that very reason, I think, which I mean, time and experience again have taught us that it's not. Yeah. And unfortunately, that easiness makes us be present everywhere. So one of the challenges is that every time there's a new toy to be present on, we start And then we lose steam or we don't know why we're there. And in fact, just the other day, someone was talking to me about wanting to test out a new business idea with a small group of people and see what happens. And they wanted to know, should I run ads on Instagram? Should I run ads on Facebook? Should I be on threads? Should I be somewhere else? And to me, the most logical thing for their use case seemed like a WhatsApp group. To build a community, all you need is a tool. And WhatsApp is a good enough tool, which everybody has on their phones. Don't have to force people to go anywhere else. So, and so where do people come for that specific WhatsApp group? They already exist in your contacts. And I think in the creation of something, we often forget that even a WhatsApp message is a piece of content. Very true. And uh, you can put out the sweetest, nicest posts on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. But then you also go and send very unprofessional messages in your WhatsApp interaction with your customers. Yeah. Then you've lost them. Correct. And also at no point are social media channels going to simply give you reach because you created an account, right? For them, the priority is who can bring in more other people. That is literally the algorithm on which social media runs. In fact, I've been following Zina Taman's page for quite some time and I enjoy interact with that content as well. But these days when she posts, I just don't see it in my feed anymore Mm -hmm. unless I go looking for it. So if someone who's had that kind of growth on a platform like Instagram in just a couple of months can have the same problems. And you don't even know why. Maybe somewhere you went and 
too quickly shut down a post about yeah. or you said you're not interested in something and, and that so in itself is having that, an impact on also the other challenge i find in content creation is that there's a certain amount of disillusionment on the one hand there's a lot of hope and excitement that okay maybe this new thing will give me that traction and that utopian dream of followers which n- nothing else has been able to or there's the other end of the spectrum where we feel like we've tried things in the past and they have not worked and surprisingly one of the most common things i hear is we've tried seo in the past and there's so much that's wrong with that sentence because first you past tensed your seo and therefore oh. it's not working anymore i think one client really put it beautifully we ran a huge campaign for them we did pr suddenly the quantum of traction on their linkedin page went up and he said it now we are on the hamster wheel we have to run oh. and i think that pretty much sums up any content production slash influencing exercise you're on it and yeah. then there's no stopping correct and now there's the allure of oh if you're struggling with all of this then just put some sort of ai chat bot and it'll be the answer to all your problems which creates another content problem because yeah, somebody because... has to feed that chat bot i presume exactly and also we've had an instance recently and i'm not sure what the mechanics are we're still researching into it a client created a post using chat gpt and put it on linkedin mm. the post before it had a few hundred engagement parameters and this post had seven likes it's ticking all the boxes but then also the platforms are also becoming smarter in terms of okay if i see more than five emojis then i know this has to be a bot and therefore i'll simply uh-huh. not give and in fact linkedin came out and they said now that content creation has become so much easier our parameters for judging your work are going to be how much work have you done in that space in the past for you to even because we have access to your job history we have access to what you've done so are you talking about the thing that you say you're supposed to be good at so your job qualifications are being matched and i think that's a beautiful thing because suddenly if you've noticed all the posts about i helped the street dog on my way to work have just vanished <laughs> all of a sudden you're right the algorithm does sometimes work in our favor also and they'll continue to optimize because like i said i think social media is always going to optimize for what is it that is going to bring more of your kind to me and what is it that's going to keep them there i think the only way for threads to really work and become something is for twitter to really collapse to a state where it's simply not serving the purpose it's supposed to serve anymore speaking of which elon musk did come out and say ad revenues on the platform have fallen by 50% mm. but the only thing that means is that brands have given up and brands of course have never been known for their loyalty to one platform over the other so we'll just have to wait and watch i think it comes back to the fundamental challenge that in marketing you do need to create a lot of content and you need to put it out there and and it's everywhere sometimes we don't think of something as content but it's, it's everywhere i think we're all sold to the premise that a good business will exist on some platforms and will also generate content in different forms like it it could be emails it could be whatsapp messages but how do we have a process that keeps working so that i'm not also saying when i did content <laughs> it didn't work for me <laughs> i think uh, the self awareness itself is a big step right it's quite interesting you bring that up because i saw an instagram ad and i'm very prone to shopping things off of instagram randomly <laughs> all the time and it was a very pretty looking skirt i went i clicked on the page and i saw the skirt and I, it was not that great once i landed up there so i wanted to see what other things do they have i went to the menu it's an e-commerce store the first tab says about us fine the second tab says our story the third tab says meet the founders the fourth tab says sustainability which is still fine but there is no shop button in the menu oh my god there is no collection there is nothing to indicate that there is a collection of things on this website that one can buy that's sad yeah i'm just thinking like someone has not noticed it or is it just that we've then moved on and somebody has told us hey now you need to go do 10 things on instagram and run 20 ads on facebook and we simply didn't have the time to come back and even look at this and mm-hmm. see this glaring problem which is right in front of us and analytics will only tell you your bounce rate is very high they are not going to tell you oh people clicked and didn't find what they were looking for mm-hmm. and some of these very obvious problems how do we solve for right and i think the first step is to just inventory all the communication that is going out from you as a brand and that could be as simple as an sms if i had one kind of thing on my wish list for 
brand marketers out there please inventory the emails that you send and just kill five of them at random <laughs> and you'd still do better like exactly. you don't even have to read exactly like i was telling you earlier i bought one bottle of vitamins <laughs> from an online med platform and i kid you not hasita the series of emails that i got were we've got your payment then we've got your order then we've confirmed your order and not only was it 5 to 6 emails and i'm not joking literally these were individual emails and the same story was repeating itself on whatsapp i blocked that at some stage but at least i was able to do that now this email i can't even get out of that loop because if there's an issue i need to know they have to have some way to contact yeah. me and i need to get the invoice and there's so many reasons why that channel is important but when they blatantly misuse it what's the customer experience like so why is it that when we are brand somehow the mindset is different from when we are customers i think if we just look at some of our customer interactions it'll be very obvious to us uh, what we are doing wrong on the sell, uh, selling side of things as well so which is really the second step i think once you have your inventory and you know what you're doing on a daily basis how much of it is recurring how much of it is one time for example you won't make a pitch deck again and again you probably make it once and you share it contextually then the next step of course is to remove what doesn't make sense from that process anymore for example for this podcast which is now also on substack is there really a need for a separate episode wise write up to appear on my website i don't know it's one more thing for me to do once you've started something you want to continue it you want to do it for as long as possible uh, but removing these little bits and pieces will only make the experience better because when you do see that you're at the receiving end of so much communication from large brands and large influencers let's say mm. that you wonder uh, if they need to shout from the rooftop so much who are you to think that you don't need to absolutely but shouting from the rooftops can take various form and formats and it doesn't always mean quantity so if i have my one or two newsletters that are happening in a month how do i make each of them so good that people look forward to it over and over again definitely we do shop from a lot of smaller brands very consciously mm. and we try and see where somewhere we can promote a small business and i'm more than happy to get just that one mail which says we've got your payment and the stuff will reach you and then when the product actually comes a thoughtful little note in the yeah. box or the bag saying this is our story and hope you like it and that's all i need for me to just be connected to that brand which is happening because i think everyone has found what is their locus of control and they're controlling only that much mm. recently i placed a cash on delivery order from a new brand their entire logistics are handled by ship rocket so it is ship rocket messaging me to check you place this order are you sure you want it because it's a cash on delivery order mm. so mm. if you want to change your mm. mind now is a good time and once you confirm it it says okay your order will be delivered by this date and on the day of delivery i just got one message saying you can pay by cash or you can use a link and that's it because they are a logistics partner they know the pain of somebody suffering through 10 emails yeah. just to get one medicine delivered and not only that they are very focused on the outcome they want to achieve Absolutely. that when i go there you're ready to pay i really don't see always the need even in larger organizations for there to exist templates for everything mm. i think it really takes the humanity out of some of these things and it really doesn't give people a choice to say okay maybe this is not required because your algorithm is saying you have to send this after this or perhaps that's what creeps in when you have a marketing team and you have different folks doing different things not really sure who's owning it and maybe it's always okay finally the founder owns it so if i shouldn't be sending this they'll tell me and a good way to even just look at it is to see what you have sent in the last one month it's not a door that's shut forever right you can mm. always fix it you can always correct it and there are beautiful examples i think for the longest time danzos uh, push notifications were just the sweetest things mm, to true. receive it's very personal very conversational i think they've really optimized their you know logistics to the point where they know when to send that push notification when to just not say anything mm. and that's the beauty of data right like we have enough indicators today to tell us where do customers need more of us and where do they need a lot less of us if you start with saying okay there are 20 platforms i could potentially exist on 
I could be on Quora and I could be on Pinterest and I could be <laughs> everywhere and I could be a billboard on the way to the airport or stopping me. I could be everywhere. But what am I doing now? And what's ideal for my brand? And what's ideal for my capacity mm. and sanity? Recently, I was reading this case study about the founders of Yoga Bar and how they went about the process of just figuring out do customers even want us? Right. Is there a large enough segment of people who will buy over and over again from me to the point where I'm breaking even at least if nothing else. And I really liked the two, three things she said where one, she talks about just staying away from this whole social media D2C e-commerce game entirely. Mm -hmm. And instead choosing to be on shelves, being top of mind in front of people's faces in places like Namdhari's, in places like Nature's Basket, mm -hmm. where based on their research, they found that the people who might like something like this will visit and she also talks about how the packaging itself is very, I think they were one of the earliest brands to put all of their ingredients prominently on the packaging. And she says, for the longest time, my personal phone number used to be on the packet. So then if someone had a problem, the person they were reaching was me. And I was hearing from them firsthand what the problem was. And we only launched a second flavor after we realized that the first flavor has enough lifetime value, meaning there are enough repeat customers to justify my cost of advertising for that product. You want people to come back and say, hey, I really missed it mm. while it wasn't there. Mm. Which interestingly is what happened when I posted a picture saying we are restarting recording for uh, season three of this podcast. So many people reached out and said, we are so excited. This was important to us and I feel very humbled and honored that we've been able to play that role in somebody's life. And I think that uh, ties down to how much communication you put out, right? If you know that, hey, I've got the energy only for two episodes a month, mm. then let me not also bombard the listener with a post about my podcast every two days. Because Unless you feel like it. If it's really something you're so excited about that you have to go tell the world four times a week, then please do that. And recently we were doing a, a very interesting engagement with somebody, very small team, just starting out, figuring out how do I even set up a content marketing process uh, on the work that I do. And one of the things we told them up front is give yourself those early wins. Like there are things you can create and then you don't have to look at them probably for the next six to nine months. A pitch deck again is a great example. There are probably some case studies. There are mm. probably some product offerings for which you've created individual slides and presentations. These things can be done. Your WhatsApp templates can be done. Reaching out to people using that template can be done. Because until we get that feedback from the outside in, it's very difficult to stay consistent and just say, no, I'm just going to constantly keep posting irrespective of whether it results in anything at all. Correct. Because then it just becomes noise and we, we are not getting feedback and we don't realize that you're talking to a vacuum and uh, not really being received by anyone. Of course, common advice does say keep at it for at least a three month period. But in that three month period, we are not saying close your eyes and do nothing about it. Right? We, are, we are also saying observe how things are being received. What can you tweak? Sometimes it could simply be that you have a lot to say, but you don't know how to say it. Storytelling in and of itself is a big enough piece mm. to sometimes have to worry about. I think content will continue to be a challenge, especially for smaller teams and uh, smaller businesses with uh, limited resources. It's so important what you say of taking stock, finding focus, being intentional, going for wins because you really do need them on most days. Going for something that looks, sounds, feels right and being willing to give up something that you get feedback isn't working. Mm -hmm. They're all busy people. But the good ones have actually taken months, if not more, just to tweak, optimize, set the baseline to a point where after that, once you amplify that sound, it still makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And that's not always an easy thing to do, especially in the context of startups where everything is moving fast. Sometimes it's very easy to feel like, oh, okay, I'm not doing enough to justify my salary, perhaps. And that in and of itself sometimes causes us to want to do more. But I think as long as you have a plan and you say, this is what I'm working towards and this is how it's going to look as I'm working towards it, it's still a very sellable proposition. Even when you're not doing something, it stresses you out mm -hmm. because you've not intentionally said, hey, that's not important for me now. So you're constantly saying, hey, should I be there? Should I be doing that? Saying, okay, for the next six months, this is my rope. Mm -hmm. And sticking to it, I think, takes away a lot of that stress. 
too. Absolutely. And it also gives you a chance to experiment and play around with things and not take everything seriously to the point where it has to be a 12 month content calendar. Yeah. We don't know if the platform will exist. Well, <laughs> what if Elon Musk buys out threads also? Any number of things could happen. So how can you hitch a ride on something that you're not enjoying today? I think finally hitch a ride on your core business. I think that's where oh, okay. you should be spending the maximum time no matter what. And now it's time for the much awaited Topical. Did you hear that uh, Apple's found a new way to ask for your kidney? I don't have any more kidneys to spare. I'm sorry. <laughs> but have you seen that? I have seen the Apple Vision Pro and I would like to unsee the Apple Vision <laughs> Pro because I think just the premise of something on my face. See, you have to understand I underwent a surgery to avoid glasses on my face. I'm not going to intentionally go back and put something on my face and then look at you and talk to you while also engaging with other stuff. I'm not making any commitments because I made a lot of fun of the Apple AirPod when it came. So did I. <laughs> the initial marketing collateral that they put out, I, I did make fun of it in about how it just hangs from the year and how it's going to fall off. And I <laughs> take all that back so many times because I can't live without them now. But adoption is adoption finally, right? It's not just a software product challenge where you uninstall the app and you're done with it. Yeah. You're asking for a much bigger commitment at a much bigger price point. And I came across this uh, comic on LinkedIn the other day. I follow this page called Marketoonist run by Tom Fishman, who's just amazing at comics in general in this space. And he talks about a concept that was introduced way back in 1991, when I'm sure the market was not this busy. And it's called crossing the chasm. It's a Joffrey Moore concept, apparently. And it says, yes, you have your innovators, which are the very early buyers, the people selling two kidneys to buy the <laughs> Apple Vision Pro, uh, maybe getting some early samples of it. Yeah. Then you have the early adopters, people yeah. who are excited about the tech and who are going to advocate, evangelize. But somewhere in between that and the early majority itself, which is saying, I have an Apple Vision Pro, you also have one and let's both of us talk. That is early majority, literally, right? Yeah. It's people who already enjoy gadgets, making a very conscious choice. In between these two exists the chasm and a lot of people just fall off there. And we've seen it happen in so many other platforms. Orkut was a great, maybe not early adoption, but late adoption, definitely. Uh, Google used to have a social media platform right, at one right. point. Circle, round, something. Something, no? Circle, Tribe, I, was, I don't know, uh -huh. whatever it was. That's gone, right? And we don't know what else will continue, what else will not. So do I want to make that kind of an investment in an ecosystem that's not even known for its gaming capabilities? It just seems it adds to our content conundrum in a way that there's one more way in which people are going to see, hear and listen to you and much more powerful and impactful way right like when you put a visual in front of somebody yes. and you talk into their ears and you're taking their attention away from something else like playing with their child mm. or they're trying to focus on this while they're playing with their child apparently wow it's just a worst case scenario imagine if you've got this headgear in front of you and you're getting sms after sms on how <gasps> my god that pizza guy has reached this point and now he's at this point and now he's opening his umbrella and oh, he'll be 10 minutes <laughs> late and all of that is uh, happening in real time. But honestly, I think it seems like too much of an intrusion into my headspace, which is one reason why I've avoided the Apple Watch mm -hmm. for so long and I still continue to avoid it is because I don't know if I want to receive WhatsApp messages on my wrist mm -hmm. and have that thing constantly. Correct. I'm distracted enough as it is. Yeah. There will be one shiny new object every few months and the onus is on us to say yes or no and saying exactly. no is not going to kill your life or your business absolutely if there is one takeaway let it be that it's okay to not always jump onto something new as long as you're doing what you're doing and you're constantly doing that better Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Damn Good Marketing Podcast. Today we discussed a lot about just getting intentional with the content that you're already producing because you are probably already producing a lot of it, maybe intentionally, maybe otherwise. Start with an inventory, see what's happening there. Ask customers. I think that's always a very valuable way of doing it. Ask your best customers what's working, what's not working for them. Send them a gift voucher while you're at it. They'd appreciate that too. And let us know how it goes. Is, has that made the process easier for you? Has that cleared up your headspace? Helped you set the right expectations? What is the outcome of this exercise? We'd love to hear. You can find us on LinkedIn. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. 
thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the damn good marketing podcast we're so glad to have you here if you enjoyed the episode as much as we enjoyed making it please hit subscribe follow whatever is that big shiny cta you see on whichever podcast platform you're listening to on right now it would mean so much to us see you next time